Um, I was asked to read verses uh, in John uh, chapter 4, verses 2 through 14. Uh, that's Jesus and the woman at the Samaria at the well. Um, I'm, I'm going to do this, and I do got to leave kind of early, so I get a head start to Las Vegas this morning. So I'm going to read the verses out loud first here. So it's, uh, now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria and call, called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Verse 12, Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up into eternal life. So the, the central themes that I see in this, uh, this verse is, although it is kind of halfway through the main portion of the woman at the well, uh, it stops at verse 14, um, the, the main themes that I see would be um, in, 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 uh, in, John, in John 4, verses 2 through 14, Jesus speaks with a Samaritan woman at the well, confronting her about sin while also comforting her with the gospel and who he truly is. The central themes I see in the story of Jesus and the Samaritan woman are, number one is evangelism. Here we see a well-thought-out, and well-planned mission trip to win just one soul. Jesus shows he knows the precious value of just one soul. Uh, number two is respect. Jesus treats this woman as a valid conversation partner, engaging in serious theological discussion and even disagreeing with some of her beliefs and affirmations. And uh, the number three is transformation. Jesus offers the woman the gift of living water, which leads to eternal life or unending friendship with God. This transformation is really evident when the woman returns to the town and brings many people to meet Jesus. And at the same time, the disciples are reminded of their real mission as followers of Jesus Christ, which is to win souls. So verses uh, 1 through 6, upon entering the passage in verses 1 through 6, we find out that the details of how Jesus came to be in Samaria. Verses 1 through 3 tell us that Jesus wanted to leave Judea after finding out that the Pharisees knew how large a crowd, a following he had gained through his disciples' ministry of baptism. Reading this quickly may give you the impression that Jesus was afraid of the Jewish leaders and didn't want to get into a public debate over his ministry or his disciples' baptizing. But I don't, think th I don't think that is what is happening here. Jesus wasn't afraid at all the Pharisees. He desired to leave Judea when he heard the, this news because he didn't want to begin publicly clashing with the Pharisees until the time was right. So off he goes to Samaria because his hour was not yet come. The land at this time was separated into three distinct sections. In the south was Judah, Galilee in the north, and in between them was Samaria. So in order to get back to Galilee, Jesus had to pass through Samaria. And while traveling through Samaria, they stopped around the sixth hour, 
which actually is about noon, by Jacob's well in the town of Sychar, because, of, because verse 6 says Jesus was wearied from his journey. In the detail of the text, we can see Jesus was weary from the journey. The eternal Son of God is tired. Here, we, here we're reminded that through Jesus, oh, no, here we're reminded that though Jesus is true God, he is also true man. And in his humanity, he experienced true fatigue. Though we may have a bit of trouble grasping Jesus being fully God, as well as being fully man, which is a paradox. As the, <laughs> as the demands of his ministry increased on Jesus, you can expect that Jesus, in his humanity, grew physically, mentally, and emotionally tired and weary. I'm sure some of us know what this is like to be weary. So for Jesus, the demands of his ministry, coupled with the demands placed on him by being in the region largely made up of a desert, and then remembering it was the hottest time of the day, we can surely understand why he was weary. So here is Jesus, weary, sitting down by Jacob's well in Sychar. Before this passage even be begins, really, we have something to learn from this. Jesus, who will soon present himself to be the source of living water here, is sitting beside the well of water with uh, massive historical significance. Um, in the Old Testament, there was many uh, uh, parables or examples of this with men and women meeting at wells, but they usually ended in marriage. So this is a little different here. Two wells are being presented here, one physical and one spiritual, one temporary and one eternal, one lesser and one greater. Jacob's well, as great as it was, pels in comparison to the well of living water. So the scene is now set for the meeting of the well of living water who is sitting by Jacob's well, who will change everything for one Samaritan woman. Our title of the rest of this is the, Thirst, the Thirsty Savior. So one of the reasons the Gospel of John is so powerful and rich is because John shows Jesus encountering all kinds of people from all walks of life. Back in chapter 3, we see a large exchange between Jesus and the ruler of the Jews named Nicodemus, chapter 3. Here in chapter 4, we see Jesus having another large exchange, but this time it's with a Samaritan woman. In verses, a Samaritan woman, in the verses were introduced to her. We don't know her by name, and not much is said about her. What we do know is that she probably lived a very promiscuous life, being that in verse 18, it reveals how many husbands she had. And we also know that she was a Samaritan. A little background of uh, the Samaritans here. The historical roots of the Samaritan people go all the way back to King David. When David conquered the city of Jerusalem, he made it into the capital of, it, of Israel. It was in Jerusalem that Solomon built the temple, and it, was, it, and it was Jerusalem that functioned as the centerpiece of the religious life of the Jewish people. But when Solomon's Israel was split into two kingdoms, Judah in the south and Israel in the north, the northern Israelites built the city of Samaria and made it their capital. Later, when Assyria came and conquered the northern kingdom in 722, it captured Samaria. Many Jews were deported and many foreigners were moved in. With this mix of people came mixed marriages, mixed practices of religion, and mixed everything, really. The Samaritans then had built a new place of worship in Mount Jerusalem and rejected anything that had to do with, Ju with Jerusalem, which led to the rejection of all Jewish scriptures except the uh, first five books of Moses. Because of this practice, an, an amnesty was born and grew between the Samaritans and the Jews, so much so that by the time of the first, first century comes around, the Jews who were traveling north out of Jerusalem to Galilee would intentionally go around Samaria to avoid it at all costs. But yet, Jesus did, didn't go around Samaria. He went straight into it and sat down at Jacob's well. <clears throat> the con conclusion would this be, uh, there's actually a song out there that's called Fill My Cup, Lord. So, he, so there is a reminder of the vanity of the earthly things. Anyone who drinks of the water of this world will be thirsty again. We all know what it is to be thirsty, and we know that the body can live for weeks without food, but only a few days without water. 
There's a famous song called Fill My Cup, Lord. One verse in particular was written out of the story. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. And then I heard my Savior speaking, draw from the well that never shall run dry. And, and, the, and the choir goes like this. So fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up to you, Lord. Come and quench my thirsty soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. In verse 15, the woman even says, give me this water. She didn't understand what it meant, but she wanted what he had. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.